Yeah, Coach, just, uh, you know, get ready to open up the season. Uh, how do you feel things have come together uh, with the unit and uh, uh, so forth? It's, uh, I'm counting four returners, seven new guys. Yeah, so it's 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 exciting time, right? Um, feel the excitement from the players uh, yesterday, you know, how they practiced, um, just the intent, um, their, where their mindset is. It's been it's been good, you know, and, and you know, we say uh, we're going to work up to and through the game. So, you know, the hay is never in the barn. So it's just a continuing process of, you know, what we need to do on defense uh, to have success. And so uh, that's what we're looking at. Um, you know, we just finished a walkthrough right now. The guys are locked in. And so it's just, you know, one step at a time, one day at a time. We take that mentality and everything. And, you know, we'll, game's not over in the second corner. We're going to work up to and, and through this game, you know, till the, the clock's at zero. So, uh, but it's exciting and, and looking forward to it. And I was talking to AJ yesterday and some of the other guys. They were saying the communications. We're really making sure that we're on top of that. Mm -hmm. uh, how vital is that uh, going into a game one against, uh, you know, a team that you probably – you know, can't really, you know, get a good film study on it. Yeah, well, uh, I think, you know, like what you said, um, the film study, it, it's always going to be about us, uh, the Falcons, and Falcons defense, Falcons offense, Falcons special, our, you know, our team. And um, it's, it's that's where the focus has been, and that's where the communication, you know, even a player, you know, our offense does a great job of, you know, all the shifts and the trades and the motions that they do. And so, it, it, you know, it, ma it makes us communicate. It makes us you know, have to go through those scenarios and they put us in tough positions, you know. So we feel like our guys have done a really good job at, at you know, if we've missed something, you know, we've corrected it. We do feel prepared. Um, but this kind of been a, you know, since OTAs, we've been kind of seeing that and the communication has been a huge part of, uh, you know, what we do on defense. Hey, Coach, what sort of unique challenges is it obviously facing a team whose quarterback is playing his first NFL game? So sure. it's not a whole lot of Film on him to really see what he likes to do. Yeah, again, it's it's going to be about us, and uh, you know we're obviously studying our, our opponent um, and give those guys credit. You know they they finish the season hard. They do have a uh, they finish the season good. They have a new coaching staff, uh, but everything you know comes back back to us. You know they have good players over there. The offensive line is you know good group. You know new quarterback, but you know they've got a bunch of receivers over there that made a lot of plays and, and a couple of good runners, and so. Uh, even the tight end position, you know, they got a lot of experience. And so, um, you know, we're looking forward to, you know, playing our game, keeping the focus on us. It's all about what we do, uh, how we play, how we tackle, um, you know, and those things. And so uh, we're studying them, but again, the focus is on, on, on us. What was it like through the first three preseason games, learning the dynamic of calling plays with this defense? Oh, it was great. It was fun. Um, you know, you know what we do on defensive, defensively is a, a collaborative effort. You know, we've got a ton of experience: uh, Jerry Gray, Dave Huxtable, Frank Bush, um, a ton of good, um, really excellent football coaches in that room. And so, it's made things. Um, you know, everything that we're doing, constant communication, and the meetings have been fantastic. And so, all that is is just an extension of. You know what we're doing in practice and in the games, and, and hearing what those guys have to say, and um, you know, just the experience and the things that they've already been through, and so it's been awesome. You know, go through the process with those guys. Uh, it's it, our our defensive meetings are are awesome, and just listen to those guys talk and everything, and um, so really have leaned heavily on those on our staff. Um, and again, it's it, this is this is all of us in in this thing, and so, uh, but it's been fun. Our players have been. Uh, Really, the guys done a great job coaching them up. Our players really bought into what we're doing, fundamentals, technique, you know, those type of things. Uh, you know, so it'll be live on, on uh, you know, real on, on uh, Sunday. But I think, you know, with the guys, it's been pretty good. Is that collaboration with Clay Calling familiar since you were a co-defensive coordinator in New Orleans? Well, look, every place is diff different, right? And so um, Art did a great job. You know, we had some guys that were here. And some new guys and um, really appreciate, you know, the staff of everybody coming together and sharing their ideas. You know, and that's, you know, early when we started getting going with this, you know, we would, you know, put something up and, we, you know, the guys would be talking in the room about, you know, how do we fit this and how do we cover this and this is the techniques. And, and that's kind of how it all worked. You know, it all, it all came together that way. And so uh, 
it, it's been a fun process. It's, it's been an exciting process. Looking forward to it. Um, but again, every every place is different, and so this is a, unique into what we do. Um, now, wouldn't want it any other way. Like how we've done it here, it's it's you know, really appreciate those guys in that room. Um, really good people and football coaches. Forget my ignorance. The last time in your career you were the primary play caller on defense. Uh, it's been a while. It's been a while. I mean, last year a couple a couple games in preseason, yeah. but it's been it's been uh, been a while. I know it's a collaborative effort. Mm -hmm. You've done some of that through your career here and there. Yeah. How, I mean, does that split work? I'm not asking about any specifics and you, what you've done, but in general, is it like one guy's going to be calling first downs and somebody's going to call third downs, or is it? Yeah. So don't want to get into the specifics of how we're going to do it, um, but just talking about the game plan, like. Uh, We've talked about as a staff, you know, down in distances, how do we want to call things, you know, the calls in, in the situations. And so it's been, feel like, hey, look, the game's been played. You know, we know what we're going to call situationally. We're going to know what we're going to call, whether it be first down or whatever it is. And there's a, a menu of calls that you go through. Um, but just listen to everybody. Like, that's, that's how it will be, that's how it will be called on, on Sunday. How does feel, you hear offensive play callers talk about feel and rhythm mm -hmm. and, how does that work? Is, is it the same thing in defensive play calling? Do you think? Sure, I think you know everybody's different, right? And so um, there's some to, some something to that. Um, you know, it's it's you know what you want to put your, your guys in the best position for them to have success, right? And that's you know you're playing percentages and and you know certain things that have come up in game films that you're seeing, you know, and and then the other part of it is what are you doing best? You know how well are we how well are we playing a particular coverage or a pressure or, or a pass rush or whatever it is, and so it's just a balance between all of those things. Is it exciting? Is it pressure? I mean, what what's that like? You know, going through the week with with the staff and our players and everything, it's you know we talk to the guys um, and, and in the team meetings, you know, with Art is look practice put a premium on practice in the meetings. And, and go through the game, you know, every single day. So, you know, it's it's played before, you know, we get to Sunday. Practice is harder than the games. Like that's what we're always pushing. And, um, you know, you, you kind of thinking about that as, you know, you're, you're, you, this is what we want to call in this situation and, and put the guys in this. And then, you know, when they have when they have success and, and we're doing it on the practice field and you're like, oh man, I feel I feel better about this. You know, and so you feel, you know, and then by game day, you're, you know, you're kind of narrowed into, you know, we like this, we like this, we like this. And as a staff, we've all discussed it, you know, and, that, and that, that's really where it started. We've discussed it. This is the calls that we've done in the week. We've practiced it. We've had success more here than there. And this is what we'll lean to. Is there a lot of chatter on the headset as you're calling the game? Or is it like, I need, you know, all the input's here now. Now I need quiet and we need to. It's, it's. It's back and forth. I mean, it just it's, on the yeah. Guy and the team and staff. yeah, that's right. If you were to look back at when you kind of got revved up here during the spring and what you guys were able to do in terms of setting a tone and teaching a scheme and learning your players and all this stuff, now we're so close to the first game. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you got everything accomplished that that like you wanted to kind of heading into this moment? Well, we, again, when we first got together as a staff, you know, we. We, we sat down and we, hey, these are the things that we got to get done. This is football, offensive football, and this is how we have to defend it in this day and age, right? And so, you know, we've put some things in, you know, we have to get a few things done. And, you know, obviously tackling and takeaways, you know, are huge in the game. And everybody's talking about that. And so those two things. But then a lot of it was, you know, learning our players and where does the players and the scheme fit together. And it, this is a player's game at the end of the day, you know, and so, you know, what we're, what we're trying to do as coaching staff is, you know, coach our players with the best fundamentals, you know, what we feel, you know, is going to have them have success and then put them in the best places, which is the scheme to have success. And so just going through the process, it's been feel like our guys have come along and learned some techniques, playing confident, you know, um, at all positions, whether it be the back end, the linebackers and the D line. And, and so just continuing to grow together. Like that's the important thing now of taking the next step. Like we got to go out. We haven't played a game yet, but we feel like up until this point, you know, our guys have really um, have performed and have really tried to do the fundamentals and technique within the scheme, 
you know, and, and again, we're going to continue to push this all the way up to and, and, and through the first game. And then we start again all over, you know, after the game Sunday night and, and into Monday. So, uh, yeah, I feel, feel pretty good about, about all those things that we've discussed. And, um, but we still want to get better at everything. That's the important thing is that we don't want to just be stagnant and, you know, everything's good right now. We want to continue to push. Good can be better. And we want to always get to the best that we can. And as a football coach, there's always something that we can get better at. And so that's what we're going to keep pressing with the guys. Coach, what's the importance of uh, getting off to a good start, uh, you, know, um, you know, getting a win to get things started? Uh, yeah, it's always important, right? Everybody's going to be, hey, we got to start fast. I mean, that's going to be the, the message across every team, right? And so, uh, yeah, it's important. Um, but you know, each game is just is, is a unit. You know, we got 17 of them, and they all count the same. Um, and so, yes, it is important. Uh, we want to win this one. Uh, that's all we're focused on on this one. Um, you know, going out and playing uh, our best this game, and then the rest of the season, we're not looking at anything past you know Sunday, Carolina Panthers. We've talked a lot about the play calling collaboration, but how excited are you to take this next step in your career? Um, it's, it's so much, um, I, I love being here and, uh, the head coach art has the, the, um, the way we are, the culture is it's, it's every day get up and can't wait to get into the building because we've got great people here, the culture here, the players, assistant coaches, like everybody is, it's, um, and so just enjoying being in this moment has, has been so fun. Um, it just it can't e express how appreciative um, and excited that uh, we are to be here. And just be, you know, even in here today, like it's, this has been, it's, 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 it's been such a great experience. Um, and so appreciative again to Art and uh, Terry and, and the organization. I mean, it, it's it's top notch. And every day you come in, the players are energetic and ready to go. And that, like that's what you're. It's it's a high energy, uh, positive. I mean, you know, and, and we're a, it's moving fast and it's it's exciting. So, um, yeah, excited. I, that's probably the best. I'm excited about it. We heard earlier in the week that um, you guys were not ruling Jeff out for for this week. And I don't know what today's report is going to say. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about the, 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 how you, what you feel about the, the depth that cornerback and how you handle uh, a situation when you've got a veteran who well, I know wants to be on the field, but yeah. thinking about 17 games. Yeah, he does. He does. Um, you know, uh, Jerry and, and Jack have done a great job developing that whole group. Um, we've got some young guys that, that uh, are coming along, and uh, we've got some older veterans that have played a lot of games, made a lot of plays, and so I feel really good where we are with that position. Um, you know, you get bet Jeff in, in, in that unit. I mean, we've got a pretty deep unit, you know, and so uh, feel good about everything. Anything else? All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. How's everybody doing today? Doing good. How are you? Well, good. Doing great. Excited to get to practice today. Carolina's going to be a great challenge for us on special teams. You know, starting with Coach Chris Tabor. He's been doing it for a long time. I have the privilege to coach against him and learn against him the last couple of years being in the NFL. I'll tell you this about his units. They're going to play fast. They're going to be physical. Those guys play from, you know, from the beginning of the snap to the end of the whistle. They have great core players, Sam Franklin, who's been a four-phase player for those guys. Um, and then you talk about Panero, who had a solid season last year. And then Johnny Hecker, who's dynamic with the ball in his hands as a punter and in whatever way he can help the team and bring, provide energy for their team. So we look forward to the challenge this week and want to open it up to any questions. Uh, yeah, Coach, does Hecker, um, do you have the green light to, to do things on the zone, or do you think most of that's design operations when they do decide to do a little trickeration there with them? Uh, I, th I think it's based on week by week. Mm -hmm. One, he's very talented as a punter, and he has the ability to kick off, and then everybody knows he has the ability to throw the football, D-Lad. And it goes with that, what they see on film, and it's a collaboration between, I guess, with their head coach and their coordinator. And it's cool to see him, you know, in his career and what he's done so far. And just from people that have worked with him, coaches and players I know and my peers, they speak so highly of him. And there's a reason why he's been doing it at a high level for so long. 
uh, Arthur said yesterday, you mentioned Coach Tabor saying that he's you know the kind of coach that will probably want to throw in a wrinkle. He said he almost has one for, for every game. So how does that impact you when you're preparing for a game going up against this best coach? Oh, my bad. I got something being built for you guys. <laughs> That's not loud at all. Um, I would say it, every week we always got to make sure that we're sound, you know, pre-snap and post-snap. We, As a special teams unit, we, we try to create and control field position. Part of controlling field position is making sure that we're not giving away any, any things to where they can steal a possession or, you know, extend their drive. So those are things that we try to be fundamentally sound each and every week no matter who we're going against. And our players, we bring awareness to the coordinator, bring awareness to certain players that they have on their team. And we look at the history of that, that coach. But at the end of the day, we got to make sure that we're sound. We're making sure that, number one, as a punt return or kickoff return unit, that we get the ball for our offense the very next play. When it comes to, 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 uh, to uh, D. Alford, why was he somebody that you liked in that punt um, return spot? Well, you know, D's been working on punt return since last year. And when it comes to the, re the return position, I always look at, as a special teams unit, as a coach, coaching staff, we look at the guys that are putting in the work and he's put in the work in, and we trust them back there. When you carry the ball, you carry the fate of our organization in your hands. So we're looking at that position as a guy that's another offensive player and offensive tool for us when it comes to the punt returner. So each and every day he's coming out here, putting in the work, catching the ball, working on his uh, catch mechanics. Uh, he has he has make miss ability, and then also too, guys want to block for him. Guys want to work hard and finish the play for him. So it's cool to see him, you know, continue to work on his craft. He has a, you know, a lot of things he can continue to work on, and he knows that. And his best balls yet to come. The Panthers have a new head coach. How much does that impact the way you approach special teams? And it kind of helps, you know, one how they build their roster. With the head coach, it comes with a new coaching staff, new offense coordinator, defense coordinator. How do they put together their roster when it comes to the 53 that are you know, on the active roster and the 48 on game day, and how they want to use those players? And the back half of that roster, how they're using those players when it correlated to special teams. So some teams, you know, for instance, they move from a 4-3 to a 3-4, 3-4 to a 4-3. Do they want to dress more safeties? Do they want to dress more corners? Do they want to dress more receivers? Who are those receivers? Who are those running backs? So those are things, especially going into week one when you're different with, dealing with a lot of different variables, new coaching staff, that what helps us is that they have the same coordinator, same special teams coordinator, have a history of going against this coordinator. I'll tell you that they're going to be play fast, they're going to be big, and they're going to be physical, no matter who they have out there. And those guys are going to play hard for Coach Tabor, and I give him a lot of credit for what he's done in his career in the NFL. You could be without Carroll for this game. Um, whether you have him or not, what does he provide uh, as a special teams player? And if he's not able to play, obviously, you know, what do you need out of guy, guy who's going to fill in for him? Well, number one, CP is the best in the NFL as a kickoff returner. So when he's out there, people feel him. There's one thing to practice. I've coached against CP for years, too, being in the NF, or NFC North when I was with the Lions and he was with the Bears. And we'll work on certain kicks to try to get the ball away from him. But then once you're out there on game day, 84 is actually on the field. So it's a different beast when it comes to that. So having that energy and having a guy that works so hard and everybody wants to play so hard for and with, it's, it makes it different. Now, I would say not having CP, if he wasn't out there, we don't know. You know we're going to put the best 11 out there. But whether CP's out there or not, we're going to put the best 11 out there. And we expect all 11 players to be playmakers out there. Number one, make sure we have good catch mechanics as a returner. And we have good run tracks as a returner. And then the other 10 guys becoming playmakers and playing with great effort. Because we firmly believe in our room, great plays are made from great effort. Anything else? Coach, can you tell me what uh, role will Matthew Bergeron have on the special teams? And what are your impressions of it? Well, we think about putting Bergeron as, speaking of punt returner, we're going to put him at, no, I'm messing up. <laughs> he will want that, but, you know, uh, we, we use all 48. When it comes to special teams, we're using all 48. You can see, probably see in the preseason in our practice, he's been on field goal protection, which is an offensive play for us, which he is already on offense, starting on offense. So being part of the field goal protection, they understand that we're trying to put points on the board and we're trying to do, execute that at the highest level every single time we're out there. So Bergeron, he's been doing a great job for us. Uh, we love his demeanor, what he's about, his professionalism, and we're excited to see him perform on a Sunday.
Awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. Take care. Hey, you good, man? It's a nice shirt, man. Did you get it on eBay? You got to earn one of those. I got you. I like it. Last high school game played in that stadium. Oh, okay. Thanks for bringing up a bad memory, D-Lud. I played some different Canton, too. Yep. Lost 2019 state semifinals, Camp McKinley. Youngstown who? Ray. They're not even in school anymore, are they? It's basketball. Oh, okay. That doesn't count. Cleveland Heights, man. Uh, now, when I was in high school, Heights was, basketball was real. With Damon Stringer? Oh, yeah, that's my guy. Yeah, yeah. Boy, golly, man. Does he really? On Tubi, yeah. Let me tell you something. I was uh, probably a freshman, probably a sophomore when he was a senior. Yeah. I mean, he came and pulled it from, that was when, like, no one pulled from 35 feet. Right. He would pull it from 35 feet. Man. Yeah. Unbelievable. And then what? Because what? Because they weren't in football until really. How were they when Kelsey's were there? They're okay. Okay, right? Isn't that crazy? Potential two Hall of Famers, and they were just. I was there in the mid 90s. We were okay. Like six yeah. Four. Yeah, yeah. Six and four. Let's get beat by Sean. All right. Lee, Lee Road right there, right? There was a. You ever been to um, Hot Sauce? Well, not Hot Sauce. What? The. Uh, oh, it was Whitmore. So I was on the corner. No, what was the. God. Mama's Boys? Mama's Boys, man. Yeah. Good night. Great, uh, phenomenal, man. Get the, get the uh, basket, the box. Oh, good. We just have to sneak there for lunch. Is that right? Good high school members right there. That's not still open, is it? No. No. There you go. There you go. Yeah, man. Too bad. All right. All right. I'm out of here, guys. All right. Appreciate it. Yeah, <laughs> leave a minute. <laughs> I'll start. Who gets, uh, who gets credit for uh, uh, coming up with the Joker designation for CP? Oh, yeah, the Joker term. <laughs> right? Finally got one. Instead of calling it positionless, right, we'll put him in the Joker spot. Uh, you know, obviously, Coach Smith talked about it. It's, uh, it's a wild card, right? Just like in a deck of cards, potentially in some of the games you play. Uh, his ability to play in different spots and meet with different people. And um, look, uh, it's a credit to him with his ability to be able to um, – to be able to not just focus in on one position, but to be able to handle multiple in the backfield or at the line of scrimmage. And uh, we're fortunate enough to have uh, that type of player on our team. Arthur, Arthur mentioned something yesterday in, a, in an interview that I wanted to ask you about. He mentioned something about uh, the quality of offensive linemen, kind of maybe their pro readiness being Maybe not what they were a few years ago, and it seemed when he was saying it that that seemed to be some sort of consensus around the league. Is that something that you noticed? He talked about that in terms of you know talking about the Falcons investing in Lindstrom and sure. drafting Bergeron, things like that. Well, yeah, I think you know not to speak for for coach or the context in which he's spoken, but for us, right when we evaluate the tape of the college uh, players coming in, and college coaches do a great job with under the, the restrictions, the rules, the transfers, the 20 hour, all those things uh, to get their guys to have a, a great product on whenever night they play. Um, shout out to Louisville, right? Playing Thursday night, D-Light, I know you're watching versus Murray State tonight. But, yeah. but ultimately, right, the schemes are different and how they play are different. And so what they're being asked to do at their level um, is just different than what, like for us. Um, and again, you're looking for the properties that translate over from college to pro when you're evaluating offense alignment. Again, you look at the physical part, there's no doubt, but there's also that internal grit, physicality, um, how he finishes through the whistle. Those things will transfer. The technique, that can be coached if the player is willing and he's coachable. But yeah, I just think because of the way the game is played, the dimensions of the field, and how uh, certain offenses that you evaluate are playing football compared to what we do, um, yeah, there's going to be there's a curve and uh, how we evaluate how quick that player can get to our level of what we ask them. That ultimately is in the evaluation of the player and how we go about it. And on the back of that, with with Bergeron getting ready to make his first start, how have you seen him just grow from where he was? Probably, you know, not expecting to kind of have him to be bolted into this position that he's in to making the start in his first. Yeah, I would say from a competition standpoint, he came in um, regardless of where he was slotted, uh, just like what we ask all guys to do, uh, to go in and compete. And I think that's just no different than the other uh, young players that we brought into the program uh, on offense as we ask those guys to go out and, and have a certain standard. And so regardless if you get plugged into whatever position at what time, um, 
we expect a certain level of, of expectations to be met. And he's no different than any other player, regardless if you're a rookie or you're going into your 10th, 11th year. Um, and that's the one thing that I think the beauty of the NFL is. You can be in your early 30s or late 20s, and the guy playing with you in the huddle can be 21 years old. But that doesn't matter because ultimately what matters is your ability to go out there and execute an offense, move the ball, and score points, regardless of what the age or the experience is. And, um, and that's, that's the beauty of, of how the NFL works and just fortunate enough to be part of it. What are uh, some of the challenges of, about sliding inside, and how do you feel like Matt has dealt with those over the summer? Well, yeah, I think, you know, again, it, it goes back to how we train and what we ask our guys to do. Um, and that starts from right when we have a chance to work with the players, either in the classroom, in the offseason, or when we hit the field. Uh, the the O-line coaches that we have on our staff, uh, they do a great job of making players understand what the standard and how to practice and what our techniques are. And um, again, I, I, regardless of you're getting moved spots or not, the, the offense alignment, especially when you get them through college and the pro, like the reality is when they probably started in high school, they maybe played a tackle, right? They get to college and maybe because of their size, they had to move inside or they maybe stayed a tackle and they get to the NFL and they're maybe not the dimensions or what you're looking for. Uh, and then you might have to move them again. So I think the flexibility of a lot of these young players exists just because of their, really how they've matured at that position. Um, so less concerned uh, when we get players just because of the, the, their ability to have played different positions. Coach, new face here. I traveled from Montreal. To oh, there we go. You started this, might, <laughs> so this is a question about, yeah, there we go. Just to follow yeah. up on what these guys are yeah, sure. asking. Uh, you talked about Matt's evolution on the field, but can you talk, to him, uh, talk about him a little bit about how he's, he is in meeting rooms and stuff? Sure. Yeah, I mean, again, uh, there's certain settings in which we're all together um, and then in which we meet, and there's certain settings, obviously, where we break up in position groups. But uh, what you sense when we're all together, uh, the attentiveness, uh, the note-taking, and again, it's, I think it comes with all professionals, regardless of what age you are at this level. Uh, you come in and you realize that you're not going to class anymore. Um, you're not worrying about some of the things that you have to worry about in the college realm. In the NFL, it's professional, you're being paid as a professional, and you have expectations as a professional. Um, so with him, uh, you know, you, you want him to make sure, like all young players too, you don't want to have him make the same mistake twice. And so they're going to be, there's going to be mistakes out there, regardless of your age or experience. You just don't want that player to follow up and have the exact same mistake the second time that play comes up in the exact same look. And that's what we're hoping uh, with all our young players or any players, they continue to learn from that. Is there any little nervousness or discomfort from your Well, I think all players, right? I think all players. I don't, I don't, again, I wasn't this star player. I was a clipboard holder that had great penmanship, right? <laughs> uh, but ultimately, I still had the nervousness and I was a player two away. Uh, I don't think that ever leaves. I mean, I'm not trying to speak for everybody. I'm just speaking for myself, but that's part of the excitement. That's part of why you go up and, you know, I've got a son who's in eighth grade and he's playing eighth grade football. And you could see it before he goes out to action is the nervousness, the, the anxiety, but it's not, the, it's not necessarily a bad thing, right? I think when that leaves you, regardless of your profession, and if you're not excited to wake up and go do what you do, I think it's hard to do what you do at a high, at a high rate in success. And I think that's for all players. I mean, my goodness, it's the National Football League. You're on center stage regardless of the time slot or when you play, and you get a chance to be one of the less than 1% who ever play this game. Um, and you keep perspective like that, it, it really shows you get a great appreciation um, because every career is different. Some last a lot longer than others, but ultimately just to have a chance to be at this level and compete, um, you don't want to lose that perspective of, of how, what, a, what a great thing that can be for, for you as a person and, and obviously as, a, as your career. What kind of threat do you imagine uh, a backfield with Bijan and then also Tyler on Well, yeah, again, I mean, I think when you look at us uh, in general, um, it does start Again, and I think this is where, uh, you know, we obviously invested in different positions. I understand that. But ultimately, when you look at certain players, the way that we form the offense is it does, you're one of 11 regardless if you're the quarterback or you're a running back. And you can be great at any of these positions, but if guys that you're relying on and they're relying on you, right, they don't execute their job, ultimately, this is, this is the National Football League. It's not a one-man show. And... You need your teammates as well as they need you to be 
on top of your game to execute at a high level. And so when you look at the backfield or you look at the receivers, look at the quarterback, or look at the offensive line, and I always say it like this, quarterback walks up, he's got the ability to get us into a play. If he gets us into the right play and we execute, it's great. If he doesn't get us in the right play and we don't execute, ultimately the other 10 guys could have done their job. But the one player doesn't get us in the right play. Like it's hard for them to do their jobs. No different than if it's vice versa, right? The quarterback can take a perfect drop. He can do the right read, right? All of a sudden, something up front happens where a, a guard falls down, and that three technique is right in his face. The quarterback did nothing wrong. But now what he was asked to do changes dramatically because there's obviously an issue. So when you talk about the way that we look at it, it's, it's one of 11. It takes all 11 for us to be successful in offense. How eager are you to not get this game out of the way, but use it as the first building block when it comes to implementing the offense more than just what we saw in the preseason? Well, I think that's what, you know, for us, it's what training camp's for. I mean, I know we obviously go out there in preseason with the games, but you know, we've been going at this off season, a, a training camp that's lasted since what, July 27th. Um, and so it's just more excitement. It's more about letting these players get out there and play fast on things that we've been practicing and training for. And as a coach, you know, you take a ton of, the reason why you get in this profession, speaking for myself, is you want to help others, right? You want to compete against the best. And for us, we want to let these players go out and play and do what they do best. And for us as coaches, it's our job to put them in the best position. It's their job as players is to execute when they're put in that position. So it's, more, it's much more of an excitement than anything else to see these guys go out there against, you know, I know we haven't talked to Carolina, but, you know, a ton of respect for not just the personnel, which is really good, really good, but also the scheme, which, you know, I have a history um, with this scheme, but what Coach Evero and what they've been able to do with the defensive staff, um, who they brought over, how they teach, you know, a lot of people that know a lot of guys in that staff, you know, as much as I have a respect for the players, which is off the charts, it's just as high for the, for the uh, coaching staff. You mentioned on the radio this morning that... Oh, no. You listen, <laughs> you're one of the two listeners. That was good. No, that was good. Yeah. <laughs> um, you mentioned that your history with Des, when you knew him, goes back to when he was in high school. He didn't know me. I knew of him, though. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> what kind of impression did he leave on you then? Yeah, so again, that story goes back to um, a guy that I'm close to at the time, uh, a time where Des was in high school, was this high school head coach. And, um, and this person had played in the NFL for a long period of time, a very good player, been around some really good players. Um, and he just, in a roundabout way, not knowing that our, our worlds would ever collide, um, in a roundabout way would always make a case, a point of, man, I think I've got something here in high school. Um, you know, it'd be interesting to see where his career turns out. Now, as fate has had it, right, end up in the same spot, not by design, ultimately, when, all those years ago. Um, but again, I think that's one of the things where, you know, Des has gone through his own journey. Everybody has their own path to the NFL. Um, I don't think there's one perfect way to get here. I think just the, the goal is to get here. But then once you get here, it's then create what you want with your teammates, what you want that to look like for your career. And, um, and again, he doesn't know that I knew Dad's when he was 16 or 17 years old, and you know, all the pictures I have on him, they're saved in my phone. One day I'll use against him. No, no just joking on that. But yeah. Anything else? What's, what's, the, cue, what's the stick in the quarterback room? The stick yeah. in the quarterback room? Yeah. They're going to have to help me a little more with that one. Well, I don't know either. I'm trying to find out. Does someone say there's a stick? Yeah, there's some sort of stick. Like a wooden stick? Something with regards to like play calling, uh, long play calls. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the wrong guy okay, for that. Okay. Someone's getting, yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah. That was a gotcha question right there. You got me. Do you like, you good? Yeah. All right. We got the hat on too, man? Yeah. Okay, week one, man. Ready to go. <laughs> Love it. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Right.